Hello, today we are going to talk about 10.1 square root functions. Uh, you'll find that on pages 621 through 626 in your book. So let's get started. So a radical function is any function where our variable is underneath the radical. Okay, and this is called the parent radical function. All right, this is about as easy as it gets. Now, any time you want to graph these using a table of values, you want to make sure that your result under the radical is a perfect square. It just makes life a little easier for you. Uh, you don't usually doesn't require a calculator, and you won't be estimating or, or kind of graphing in between points if you try to make sure this is a perfect square when you're choosing your x value. So, the first thing I'm going to choose in this problem is 0, because 0 is a perfect square, and the square root of 0 is 0. 1, the square root of 1 is 1, and 4, the square root of 4 is 2. So as I graph this, I'm going to plot those points. So the square root of 0 is 0, the square root of 1 is 1, and the square root of 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, is 2. And I connect my dots. And you'll notice it really is kind of a, a half of a parabola. If you think of it this way, 1 squared is 1 and 2 squared is 4, uh, because they are inverse operations. So this is the parent function. And we could keep going if we wanted to. The square root of 9 is 3, and we'd have to be way out here to get to 3. Okay, uh, But this is about as basic as it gets for our parent function. Now, what we're going to do with the rest of this video is show you how you know, putting a number in front, making it negative, adding numbers in, underneath the radical and outside are going to have the same effect to this problem as all of those same rules have on quadratic equations. They make them steeper, we can make them less steep with a fraction here. Um, when we're underneath the radical, and uh, you know, we're, it's a horizontal shift uh, opposite the sign, and when you're outside the radical, what you see is what you get. So like I said, we're going to kind of revisit those same thoughts uh, the rest of the year when we're graphing. All right. So a dilation, that is when we put a number in front of the radical. So what do we think a number in front of the radical is going to do to the graph? Well, uh, if we take this 3 times the square root of x, we're going to make our table of values. All right, And we don't have to change the numbers because the only thing underneath the radical is x. So 0 is a perfect square, 1 is a perfect square, 4, four is a perfect square. So the square root of 0 is 0, and 0 times 3 is 0. And then the square root of 1 is 1, and 3 times 1 is 3. And then putting 4 underneath the radical, the square root of 4 is 2. 2 times 3 is 6. So again, just like I did in the last problem, I'm going to graph those, and we'll see how it changes. In fact, let me let me graph the original. So here's our original. Uh, square root of 1 is 1, and the square root of 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, is 2. So this is the original. This is the one we just graphed on the last page. Okay. Now, when we graph this one, you'll notice that we still start in the same spot. And that's true with quadratics too, right? If we did y equals x squared and graphed our parabola here, uh, if we made it 3x squared, it would just be steeper. Okay, we wouldn't move left or right or up and down. And then when I do 1, uh, 1, 3 is there. You notice we're already steeper. And then 4 gave us 6. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So there is our dilation. All right, so again, all a number in front does, if it's positive, is just make our graph increase quicker. All right, and just a quick review, our domain for these problems, uh, when we haven't moved left or right or up or down, our domain is x is greater than or equal to 0, and y, our range, is y is greater than or equal to 0 for both of these. This one just happens to increase quicker. All right, now let's take a look at what happens when we flip the problem. So this actually ends up turning our radical graph, uh, reflecting it across the x-axis. So again, I don't have to change what numbers I pick because x is alone under the radical. Square root of 0 is 0, and negative 3 times 0 is 0. The square root of 1 is 1, and 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. The square root of 4 is 2. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. So I'm going to plot those, and we get 0, 0. We get 1, 1, 2, 3. And we get 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 right there. And shh, oh, that's terrible. Sorry about that. But that is our graph. And remember, if you recall from the last page, whoops, I don't know what I just did. Went forward one. There we go. If you recall from the last page, uh, it looked like 
this, actually. This. Ignore that guy. And there we go. So all that negative did was reflect us across the x-axis. Now, here is where we put it all together. All right, so we have the a times the square root of x minus h plus k. Remember that underneath the radical, or in the function, as I said in the last chapter, that underneath the function is a horizontal movement, and it's opposite the sign. Okay, and then outside is a vertical movement, so a vertical translation, and what you see is what you get. So um, we'll take a look at this, all right, and we get, if we think table of values, this is where it's got to get slightly different, okay? Remember, I want the result of this adding 1 to be a, a perfect square, all right? So I started with negative 1, so I always want to get that 0 perfect square. So negative 1 plus 1 is 0, all right, and that is a perfect square. The square root of 0 is 0, and then we multiply by 2, we still get 0, and then down 3, so subtracting 3. So what that point is, that is right here, negative 1, negative 3. 1, 2, 3. Right there. Okay? Now, I'm going to plug in 0, because 0 plus 1 is 1, and the square root of 1 is 1. 1 times 2 is 2, and 2 minus 3 is negative 1. So I'm right here. And then I plug in 3 because 3 plus 1 is 4. So I'm still thinking 0, 1, and 4. I just got to, you know, adjust the numbers so that I get 0, 1, and 4. So 3 plus 1 is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. So I got a 2 here when I put in 3. 2 times 2 is 4, and 4 minus 3 is 1. All right, and again, you can show all this work on your paper. Uh, and that leaves me at 3, 1, 2, 3, and then 1. All right, and then... Probably the best line I drew. And then the domain for this, the domain would be x is greater than or equal to negative 1, and the range would be y is greater than or equal to negative 3. Okay? And remember, if you look just one more time, if this is we want to consider like our starting point, like our vertex on the quadratics we did last week, uh, this shifted backwards 1 and down 3. So this still tells us our starting point, which is very important. And you can see that we kind of still have this uh, this idea of this 2 here, right? Uh, you can kind of see it there, all right? Um, and so it can help you graph these a little quicker if you understand how these change your parabola. So what I want you to work on, well, I'll, I'll show you in class, but this should help us get through the first three examples, okay? Uh, and I, I guess I'll just see you guys in class. Good luck.